Coming up on today's show, Tesla reveals its end of year financials and promises all sorts of good things for 2019. The Nissan Leaf E Plus gets revised range ratings for its higher trim variants. And Audi promises you heaven on earth in its new Super Bowl ad. These stories and more coming next. Welcome back to another weekly roundup in the world of cleaner, greener, safer and smarter transportation. It's been quite the crazy week for me with server issues here at Transport Evolved HQ, but it's also the week where I became a bona fide American citizen. <laughs> I can vote now and legitimately share my political opinions, but don't worry, I'm not going to do that here. What I am going to do, though, is to head straight into our first story, which, of course, comes courtesy of Tesla's just released earnings report for Q4 2018. Following its profit-making third quarter, all eyes were on Tesla to continue the trend in Q4, and that it did, posting a more modest profit than in the previous quarter, but showcasing growth in terms of revenue and a great deal of promise for this year. In the earnings call afterwards, Tesla CEO Elon Musk gave us his usual stream of consciousness as to things we can look out for in 2019, including the start of production of Model 3 standard range sometime in the middle of this year, the unveiling of the Model Y for series volume production in 2020, and the first glimpse of the Tesla pickup. There is a video on this channel going into more detail, so check it out after today's show is done. At the start of the year, Nissan finally unveiled its longer range Nissan Leaf E Plus, complete with 62 kilowatt hour battery pack, faster 100 kilowatt DC quick charging capability, and an EPA estimated range of 226 miles per charge. But as it turns out, that range estimate was only for the entry level Nissan Leaf S E Plus, or equivalent in other markets. The heavier, better equipped Nissan Leaf E Plus SV and SL are going to get less range. Nissan says 215 miles. One more point for Nissan's competitors, methinks. If you're in the market for Porsche's first all-electric car, the 2019 Porsche Taycan, and you happen to live in North America, you'll be pleased to hear that Porsche has just announced that its high-end electric sedan will come with free charging for the first three years of ownership. This will include free rapid charging at Porsche's dealer networks, as well as unlimited access to electrify America's high power 350 kilowatt DC quick charging stations. Customers who want that extra bit of bling will also be able to buy a Porsche designed charging station for their home. Audi may still be in the early stages of rolling out its e-tron electric SUV, but it's already committed itself to a future where vehicle-to-grid technology is the norm by getting behind the EE bus initiative, a push to get automakers and energy companies working together to build cars that can communicate and integrate into the electrical grid. Audi says it's working together with more than 70 different companies to tie down the communication protocols between car, charging station and the smart home of the future. And the final EE bus standard will be published sometime this month. Last weekend, a series of charging providers around the world, from Electrify America through to Ionity and FastNed, announced that they were turning off some of their high-power DC quick charging stations due to an incident at a test site involving a prototype variant of a particular make of liquid-cooled charging cable that all of their stations happened to be using. Switching off stations as a precautionary measure, tests carried out between the cable manufacturer and each charging provider quickly determined all was OK, and all of the charging stations were all back online by the middle of Tuesday. Mercedes-Benz is readying itself to debut its newest V-Class MPV van series at next month's Geneva Motor Show, focusing on internal combustion engine variants of the same. However, Mercedes-Benz has confirmed that its production V-Class reveal will also include an all-electric concept MPV reveal that it hopes to bring to market by 2022. Based on the same e-drive technology as the upcoming e-Sprinter and already available e-Vito, the electric MPV will be one of 10 new electric models that Mercedes-Benz plans to bring to market in the next three years. After it opened the order books for Model 3 Performance and Model 3 Long Range Dual Motor last month, 
Tesla has now officially started Chinese deliveries of the same. And Tesla is already opening up the order books for its less expensive Model 3 long-range rear-wheel drive variant in China, showcasing just how serious it is about getting Model 3 established there. Right now, Chinese customers are paying a premium for their Model 3s, but since production is expected to start in Shanghai next year of Model 3, this will dramatically lower prices. For several years, Volkswagen's been hard at work on its MEB electrification toolkit and is promising us a whole slew of new models in the next few years based on that very same toolkit. But now it turns out that Volkswagen is looking to share its MEB electrification technology with rivals in order to help spread the cost of development. We already know that Ford has been working with Volkswagen to share that tech, but Volkswagen's brand strategy chief told Tagesspiegel midweek that Volkswagen is in, quote, advanced talks with some other brands to do exactly the same. Chargeway, the Oregonian software startup that wants to make the electric car buying and refueling process easier to understand, has now officially launched its first pilot project in Oregon. Centered around its Chargeway beacons and the accompanying Chargeway smartphone app, the goal of Chargeway is to take all those different charging connectors and charge rates and represent them to customers instead with coloured connectors and numbers, something it says dealers and customers should find a whole lot easier to understand. Here's hoping that dealerships will soon be dumping their misinformation and using the higher the number, the faster the charge as their tagline instead. Talking of charging, Audi has just announced the pricing for its e-tron charging service, a one-card integrated charge service that will roll out across Europe and then other markets for e-tron drivers. To start, the service will offer two different membership plans. There's a city tariff and a transit tariff aimed at urbanites and those who travel intercity respectively. For now, Audi's tariffs charge a monthly membership fee and then a flat fee for both AC and low power DC charging. Interestingly though, high power DC quick charging above 50 kilowatts is charged per kilowatt hour. I'll link to the press release in the show notes. And now it's time for short shorts. The explosion in US wind farms means that wind power is expected to overtake hydroelectricity as the US's primary form of renewable energy generation this year. By the end of this year, it's expected, in fact, that wind farms will produce 8% of all of America's electricity. Bloomberg BNEF has concluded that wherever you are in the world, EVs produce less emissions than internal combustion engine cars. Even in China, where 60% of electricity comes from coal, the study concluded EVs produce 20% less emissions than ICE cars. Virgin Media, one of the UK's largest TV and internet cable providers, has announced a trial project where it will install charging stations at six of its street-located broadband cabinets. Since power is already present at each of these, if successful, the trial could change EV charging in the UK in a really big way. Volkswagen's debuting yet another concept car in the form of an all-electric dune buggy, and it's going to do it at the Geneva Motor Show. Built on the MEB platform, the concept will yet again showcase the MEB platform's flexibility. But what customers really want are cars that they can buy. With worries over Brexit looming, new car sales in Ireland haven't been all that great of late. Except that is when it comes to electric cars, which have bucked the trend and grown by 680% when compared to this time last year. Well done, Ireland! Joining several other new electric concept reveals in Geneva next month, Mitsubishi has announced that it will unveil an all-electric SUV called the Engelberg Tourer. It's not clear if this will lead to a production car, but we'll share more info when we have it. Oil giant Royal Dutch Shell has just acquired another charging company, this time US-based Greenlots. Shell already owns New Motion in Europe as well as UK utility companies, so it's clear that Shell really wants in on the electric car revolution before everyone dumps the pump for good. A successful pilot project in Germany has just showcased that it's possible for electric car owners to own up to 20 euro a week by selling power back to the grid from their electric car's battery pack. 
Power drains are far smaller than many thought they would be, and they shouldn't impact battery life. Automotive startup Rivian has been busy this week showcasing its R1S and R1T electric SUV and electric pickup in Colorado at the Winter X Games. As well as getting great photos, the company has been posting images of how well its premium plugins perform in negative too cold. Swedish supercar company Koenigsegg has been wanting in on the EV market for a while, and this week it secured a $171 million investment from Chinese EV firm NEVs. Yes, the same EV company which purchased Saab's assets and is bringing an all-electric Saab to market very soon. Aston Martin has been quietly working on an all-electric version of its Rapide for some time, and this week, company CEO Andy Palmer shared a video via Twitter of the validation prototype Rapide E moving under its own power for the first time. It, like the Porsche Taycan, has an 800-volt battery. Electronics firm Siemens has opened up a new battery facility this week in Trondheim, where it will produce upwards of 300 megawatt hours of battery packs per year. Rather than be electric car based, however, these batteries will be destined for the electric shipping world. Last year, Chevrolet unveiled its Camaro eCopo concept, a tire shredding muscle car with a motor that Chevy said could theoretically become a crate motor drop in replacement for customers. This week, we saw the same car take to the drag strip for the first time, posting a 10.142 second quarter mile time. The nines are apparently the next big goal. And those are your short shorts. There will be more next week. Following in the tyre tracks of Tesla, many new electric cars are now starting to toy with the idea of over-the-air updates, allowing customers to add new features to their cars or fix software bugs long after they've left the factory. But in China, an over-the-air update for the NIO ES8 electric SUV backfired when one owner decided to update his car while driving along the road. The car rebooted as part of the update process and left itself and its driver stranded in the middle of Beijing. This is why you park before updating your software, folks. It's Super Bowl 53 this weekend, and as usual, billions of dollars will be spent by companies wanting to advertise their products to US TV audiences during the nationally celebrated event. Audi has just released its ad for this year, in which a man walks through a field of corn to an idyllic farmhouse where his deceased grandfather shows him the e-tron GT concept car. It's a neat, funny ad, and the tagline is essentially that Audi thinks the heavenly car of your dreams is coming here, on Earth, very soon. And finally, it's been a well-known fact for some time that blue jeans and Tesla white seats don't mix. With some Model X, Model S and Model 3 customers who have chosen white seats actually complaining that their blue jeans are leaving blue butt stains on their car seats. Well, Tesla's responded with a video showcasing its latest innovation to ensure that that is no longer a problem. A seat testing robot wearing blue jeans. No, I'm not kidding. And yes, it does kind of show that Tesla has a sense of humour, even if it's prepared to be the butt of jokes. And on that note, it's the end of this week's show. And don't forget to like, comment and share and bash that notification bell. If you want to support our network, you'll also find links below to Patreon, Ko-fi and our shop where you can buy yourself some TE swag, including the t-shirt that I'm wearing today. And if you want to chat about the show, then why not join our Discord server? There's also a link for that below. I'll be back next week with more news, reviews and insight for you all to enjoy. But until then, I hope the rest of your weekend is awesome and don't forget to be better, kinder and smarter to one another. Keep evolving!